Hello, welcome to another edition of Carlton's underscore futures Instagram live. Uh, my name is Stanley Philippe. I am a recruitment officer and page liaison uh, here at Carlton University. I'm hoping you're having uh, a good day. I, here in Ottawa, it's a bit cloudy, so looks like the rain clouds are going to uh, come through, which uh, is much needed. It's been a, a hot little stretch, which I'm not complaining about. I'm loving uh, the hot weather, uh, but my grass isn't loving it too much. So hopefully the rain will help cure what, what is ailing uh, my lawn. Um, so what we're doing this afternoon is having a conversation uh, with uh, two students uh, from our Faculty of Public Affairs. And what's really cool about um, our, our programs is that they are housed in what we call faculties. And so these are ways for us to kind of group similar areas areas of study uh, into these uh, wonderful homes, for lack of a better word, and um, and this creates real connection and real synergy with the different topics that you'll be uh, looking at within your program of study, as well as uh, the different opportunities that will come out. And our Faculty of Public Affairs is a really cool fac faculty, especially given our location of being in the nation's capital, and there's so many different things happening um, in Ottawa from a media perspective, from a policy perspective, uh, from uh, our global ties uh, with over 130 embassies and high commissions located uh, right here uh, in the nation's capital. So there's a lot happening and uh, a lot of really cool uh, opportunities for you to take a uh, part in. Uh, I also wanted to mention something I, I learned uh, literally a few minutes ago. So I was on Twitter uh, during my lunch and, uh, and I noticed that the OUA, the Ontario University of Athletics, uh, have they've been kind of promoting uh, their uh, awards uh, for this year. And when you know it, uh, Carlton's uh, students won an award for being the best fan base in the province of Ontario. So um, a big shout to our Ravens uh, students for being so proud of our athletes. We've had some really good uh, moments on the playing field these last few years. And a lot of it has to do with not only the quality of our athletes and the amazing coaching but also all of you. So if you do become a Raven next year, you'll be able to take part in, again, the number one uh, uh, uh fan base uh, here in Ontario. So I think that's a pretty cool uh, news story. If you if you like to hear about that, uh, maybe put in some um, some likes, um, some fire emojis is one of my favorite ones to see. So maybe you can fire up some fire emojis uh, on the uh, comment section. So again, what we're going to be doing is chatting with uh, two students in a couple of minutes. And uh, this is going to be a great opportunity for you to hear, again, from the people that really are the heartbeat of our institution, our current students. And so um, you're going to hear uh, a little bit more about uh, their experiences, their experiences connected to that first year, uh, which I know for many of you, you're thinking about first year, you're thinking about what's going to happen uh, when you start your post-secondary journey. And you're also probably thinking about uh, the end of what has been hopefully a really positive and, uh, uh, I guess, stretch of your life filled with lots of growth. You no know, high school is uh, is a, a really important time. It's a really important um, path that you'll be, um, again, wrapping up if you're in high school uh, this year and moving on to post-secondary next year. So I want to congratulate all of our grads. I know this might not be the, the kind of circumstances you were playing on, uh, again, uh, finishing your last year um, with. Uh, but nonetheless, you should be proud of your accomplishments. And, and we really look forward to be able to welcome you as a member of Carleton University uh, in the fall and then uh, on our campus once, uh, you know, everything is back to uh, a form of, nor of normalcy. So uh, big shout out to you all. Um, and we're going to be definitely uh, celebrating your successes in a special way on our Instagram live um, tomorrow afternoon. So look out for that. I should also mention that later uh, today, in about an hour and a half, we'll be back on Instagram Live with our student experience office. They've been promoting their brand new CU 1001 course, and it's going to be a really fun course for you to kind of uh, look into and think about. But I want to get to our student, and I see Emma is here right now, so I'm going to add Emma to to her about, again, her experience uh, at, uh, at Carleton. And uh, hello to you too as well, Steph. Uh, thank you for tuning in. Hey, Emma. Hey. How are you? Good, you? I'm doing pretty well, I'm doing pretty well. So Emma, first, uh, tell me where you're uh, calling in from. I'm calling from Ottawa. I'm right here in the capital. You're right in the nation's capital, awesome. So for the folks who may not know you, maybe you can tell us a bit more about yourself. So tell us about uh, your program and the, the year you're in. I am in first year at Carleton's journalism program. Well, going you're in second. year, going to second year. Yeah, I was gonna say you're in year one, but you're wrapping up year one. So tell us about, 
year one, I think your perspective is going to be super interesting because you not only experienced kind of that, you know, the first year jitter, so to speak, but you also uh, were able to experience uh, the end of first year uh, during COVID-19. So maybe you can share a bit about your first year experience. Yeah, I absolutely loved my first year. It's it was really funny, really, because I come from like a relatively big high school. And I thought that I was going to be like prepared for the big university scene, but you never really like can be fully prepared. And I loved being at university. I made so many new friends. I was able to meet people that had the same interests as me, which was really great. So I really felt included in the whole community there. There's tons of clubs too. And I joined uh, the journalism society, which was really great. And I also joined uh, sock and buskin because I love to act. So there's a whole community there that was really great. Uh, so yeah, meeting new people was probably my favorite part. And then freedom on campus, like the campus was stunning. It was really beautiful. Lots of places to study, lots of places to get food with friends. And first year, like there is a there is a struggle with transition just because of responsibility and things like that. Your teachers aren't really on top of you as they are in like high school and things like that. But I found that it helped a lot like with my friends and we would just stay on top of each other. There's group chats with your program that were really great that you'll probably meet people that way as well. And then, yeah, towards the end of the year, it was definitely a little bit of a change. Uh, but I think that they handled it like really great with the um, with the closure of campus and everything. And I still felt really connected to my profs. I was able to email them if I had any questions and exams went really well. So, yeah, I love first year. It was great. Yeah, it's, it's cool that you, you mentioned that idea of having a bit more freedom uh, when you are a university student. And there is that kind of reliance on, on yourself and your, and your network and your family uh, and friends to, to kind of keep you on track. Uh, but I also know that our, our professors are really great at connecting with students. So maybe you can talk a bit about um, ways that you're able to connect with our profs. And, and if there's a prof that you want to give a shout out to, maybe this is the, the best time to do so. So go ahead. Sure. Yeah, no, our profs, they have their online office hours, which was really great. I was able to connect with a bunch of profs that way and ask questions if I needed help with an assignment or with the exam. I know like during my exams, my profs would be like, I'm on the computer for three hours, email me whenever. So that was really great if I was having like technical difficulties, which I didn't, but some other students did. And um, yeah, one of the profs, I really liked my first uh, semester journalism prof, uh, Sarah Everts. Uh, she was great and it was kind of like one of my first classes of the the, the university year and uh, she was really great in introducing us all we were all kind of nervous and really quiet and she was trying to get us to like answer questions and she did like news quizzes that helped us keep like be informed and things like that and uh, her lectures were really interactive she just made us all feel like really comfortable and I know like in a lecture setting I was really nervous to answer questions but she was like really getting us to engage and uh, she had a lot of experience in the field too so she would give like really good um like little stories and things like that that were really funny that's awesome now I know you're in Ottawa right now are you from Ottawa yes I am okay cool and but I'm sure you met some folks from you know from Toronto from other places too yeah, all my friends are in Toronto right now. So, but I might, I'm quarantining anyway. So, good, good. I, I'm I'm from Toronto originally. And I'm curious to know uh, the folks that are in uh, that are watching right now. Please let us know where you're you're watching from. Tell us if you're watching from Ottawa, from Toronto, from out west, out east, uh, globally. Uh, we're really curious to know uh, where you're tuning in from. Um, so, I had a question, Emma, a bit about um, your first year uh, and specifically picking out courses. You know, our future students are going to, you know, the big thing they're going to be doing next is um, registering for classes. So how did you kind of, uh, you know, select your courses? Did you do it, you know, kind of like uh, off the cup or did you do some research? What was your strategy? I, uh, so with my journalism program, I only had two mandatory classes that I had to take. So I had a lot of flexibility because they really let you like build the program like how you want. So I just like looked at my interests. I wrote them all down. I was like, what classes can I look for that like would help me with these interests? So I really just kind of explored different programs, like different things like that. And I took a bunch of like, I kind of scheduled it around. So I didn't have too many early classes, but I did have to have a couple. And uh, I took like Canadian history because that was one of the requirements for my program. And um, I took really interesting classes like intro to archeology span because I'd never like learned archeology span before. I'm like, what? like where else am I going to get the chance? I might as well take it. And it was, it was a great course. And then I like uh, study of Greek civilization was really neat as well. Like there's just so many classes, like scrolling through the list. I was just like, like my mind was blown just because I wish I had more room on my time, like my timetable to take all these classes because they're all so neat. So if you have like 
I always recommend like for your electives and stuff, like take classes that like you really won't get the chance to take when you're like in the upper years. So like intro to like study of Greek civilization, I probably won't have room for that. And I really love uh, ancient Greek mythology. So I was like, I'm gonna take that and we'll see how it goes. So there's tons of classes like that that I was able to take. And I really, that, that made my school experience a lot better because I was taking classes that I was really interested in. Cool. If you're just tuning in, we are chatting with Emma, who is a, a well now second year journalism student, and uh, she is in Ottawa. And we've got some folks here from Ottawa as well. So shout out to Erica, Steph from Ottawa, Maya from Montreal. We've got uh, Toronto represented as well, Lauren and Ashley from Toronto, uh, Jillian from Hamilton, Lauren from Vancouver. Uh, and we have Milton in the house as well, to Queen Esther, and Dubai. So shout out to Dubai and all the folks that are um, currently uh, tuning in. So, um, so Ottawa is obviously our nation's capital. Um, it's an important place. And so what makes studying uh, in this nation's capital and, and uh, also on our campus uh, a really special thing for you? So studying in Ottawa was all obviously a plus because I'm from here. So it was really great. I can take the bus to school, which is awesome. But it also like the city itself has tons of resources, like government, like tons of different job opportunities there. So that was also like a really big plus for me, especially at, like being in journalism school. I need to find sources. I need to like do all like go out and find people. And there's a lot of people in Ottawa that are willing to help, whether it be government or any other kind of agencies and things like that. So that's also really important. Also, Ottawa is such a beautiful city. I love it. Uh, the canal is stunning in the summer. Uh, so that was also a plus for me. Um, and studying on Carleton, I mean, like the campus is beautiful. Like it has the river right there. There's tons of green space uh, that you can go and study with friends or lie out in the sun. Uh, the library is fantastic so many resources in there I have spent hours in there studying and not gotten bored or anything and it's just like a really welcoming place and also I mean the tunnels the tunnels are great uh, I didn't go outside very much during the winter I just walked in the tunnels so that was really cool so yeah I think mostly the resources in Ottawa were really helpful and then the beautiful campus on Carleton just like really drew me to that that school yeah Nice. Now, there was a question here uh, from Kobe Wu who asked, uh, should we take all those electives even though it's online? So um, maybe if you have uh, some tips and pointers for um, picking classes in this kind of online format. Yeah, I mean, most professors are have their presentations online already. Like my professor would post their presentation online and he would kind of like have an audio recording like behind the presentation and like you could so you could listen to it in still like a lecture format. So I'm positive that a bunch of professors will have already switched their classes over to that kind of format anyway. And it being online, like you'll still get the same information, whether the presentations and I get like the professors are really easy to reach if you have any questions. So I say that if the class really interests you, like you just still take it because it's going to be worth it and you can always connect with students that are in the class as well so you can always have a group chat going and a conversation going about the class that way as well so i yeah i say if you're interested still take it because it's worth it awesome and i should and i should mention there's gonna be some support available for you as you uh, think about registering for your classes we have a, a registration webinar available on our registrar's website as well as a workshop that you'll be able to tune into uh, on June 9th. So uh, definitely look out for that information. Um, Emma, before we let you go, do you have any kind of uh, last words of advice for our future Ravens? I just think that you guys should be excited, even though it's a different format than what everyone else is used to. I think it's still going to be such a great experience. You're going to meet so many new people, even though it's still online. And once we're able to all join on campus again, like it's just going to be such a great environment. So I don't, I don't think you guys should be sad or put down or anything. I think that you're still going to love it and you're going to love the classes and you're going to love the assignments. And it's just, it's going to be great. Awesome. Well, thank you so much and uh, enjoy the rest of, I guess, uh, late spring, early summer. And uh, hopefully we'll get to see you on campus uh, soon. Yeah, thank you so much. All right. Take care. You too. Bye. All right. So I wanted to uh, answer a couple of questions I see posted here uh, before we get to our, our next student. So uh, Maya asked a question, should I still move into res in the fall, even if it's online? So that's a really good question. And it's one of the questions that a lot of our students are asking. Um, uh, on Tuesday of this week, uh, so this past Tuesday, we had our housing uh, Microsoft Teams webinar. That was a really great session uh, to get more information about what res is gonna look like um, during uh, this coming year. So the fall of 2020 slash winter of 2021. 
2021. And so if you didn't get a chance to tune into that, Maya, I would encourage you to watch it because a lot of those questions are being answered. And ultimately, you know, the decision is yours. You'll have to kind of think about, you know, what's best for you in your particular scenario. Uh, but I would encourage you to tune into that, uh, to that webinar because there's a lot of really cool uh, bits of information that is relevant to uh, this year's um, uh, residence experience. Um, another question from Abby, when does registration for fall entry begin? Okay, so June 24th, 2020 is when our official kind of registration process will take place. Um, but before then, you'll be able to start looking at the different classes that are available and start working on your schedule um, online. So that scheduling tool will become available uh, as of June 8th. Uh, and so again, the, the workshop that we're gonna have on 9th of June is gonna help you understand how to utilize uh, that, um, that uh, platform. So, uh, so definitely tune into our workshop on June 9th, but I would encourage you to uh, either um, look in, log into your Carlton Central account um, or to uh, visit our website, uh, carlton.ca slash registrar slash registration to get more information about the registration um, process. Um, I should remind you that uh, we have a lot of really cool things that are happening over these next two days. Um, we're going to be back on Instagram in about an hour and uh, 15 minutes uh, to chat more about the Student Experience Office CU 1001 um, launch. So look out for that. And then this afternoon, for you folks who are interested in the law program or even taking courses, um, law courses at Carleton, you're going to want to tune into our Microsoft Teams webinar. We're spotlighting our, our law department. And then uh, tomorrow, we'll be back on Instagram Live for uh, some more um, really cool features with our students and a special celebration celebrating you. Uh, yes, you are future students. So um, hopefully, you'll be able to uh, tune in um, at that point. Um, okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to bring in our next students, and um, I hope I'll be able to, uh, to get them on here. Um, because, uh, because ultimately our students can tell you a bit more about what it's like to be uh, in university and studying at this point. So, um, so I don't see Yavus is here. So um, Yavus, if you are online, please uh, come on in and, uh, and tune in with us uh, and let's send in the old uh, request to join the live so we can chat with you a bit more. Um, oh, I think it's here, here we go. Let's see if this is the right one. All right, we'll give it a try here. So I'm just gonna cancel that one real quick. So again, so um, so yeah, boost if you can just send that request. So what we're doing is, oh, you have requested. Okay, let me look at it there. You have requested. This is awesome. All right, so I'm gonna bring him in, and uh, and then we'll chat a bit more about again the student experience because uh, this is what it's all about. It's all about you, our future students, and of course our current students um, as well. All right. Sorry, one second. Yeah, no worries. No worries. <clears throat> okay, I've never done this before. Yeah, I just want to flip that around. You're kind of like on an angle there. Uh, so Wait, you want oh, to make. Oh, am I? Sorry about that. There you go. Yeah, now you're good. Okay. And am I pronouncing it correctly? Is it Yavuz? It's Yavuz, yeah. Yavuz, awesome. So, Yavuz, uh, thanks for tuning in and thanks for, uh, for chatting with us. Uh, can you tell us first um, where you're calling from and uh, also uh, what you're studying at Carleton? Yeah, so I'm from uh, Toronto, Ontario, specifically North York, Ontario, uh, from West Side. Uh, and currently, I'm at Carleton University, about to start my second year uh, in public affairs and policy management, Bachelor of Public Affairs and Policy Management. I'm about to pick my specialization, and I'll probably be going into social policy or international relations and conflict. I kind of am in love with both, so I'm going to wait until the deadline to figure it out. But I mean, that's okay, right? So, so yeah. Um, I mean, that's about it for as a background. Cool, cool. I should mention I'm from Scarborough, so so I'm more of an East Bend guy myself. <laughs> um, so, so you mentioned something really interesting there about kind of figuring out which specialization you want to choose. So, with public affairs and policy management, maybe tell us a bit about kind of how you you stumbled across or decided on these kind of two yeah. areas that you're debating right now. Yeah, so actually my, my whole journey with Carleton and specifically with my program is very, I find unique in the sense that I was actually not, I didn't really even know about Carleton before until I went to this program called Forum for Young Canadians. 
Um, it's just this political advocacy and civic action program that, you know, brings together students from across Canada. And there I got to, you know, meet some people from Carleton University, some of the administrators and all that. And I fell in love with the school. Honestly, it completely changed my life around. Um, and I, I learned about PAPM. I learned about public affairs and policy management. And the best way I can des describe my program would be that it's kind of like, it's kind of like political science for people that uh, want to be more uh, on the policymaking front rather than just, you know, being on the political side of it, like on the um, political debating aspect of it and just that partisan aspect of it. Policymaking is more so just nonpartisan. It's more so, you know, back end and trying to solve the problem. Uh, very quickly about this, my uh, public affairs prof summed this up very well. If anyone's interested in political science or public affairs and policy management, the difference is that I'm quoting my prof, um, public, uh, political science is figuring out what the problem is. Public affairs and policy management is f figuring out how to fix the problem. Um, and I fell in love with that concept and I joined PAPM because of that. And I mean, I'm stuck between social policy and international relations and conflict. Uh, more so because social policy, I find that it's more domestic and I can see the changes I make. Like, so what is social policy? It's, it's healthcare, it's education. It's, I'm someone that has uh, done a lot of uh, volunteering within those fields as well. So I am passionate about that, especially because I grew up in um, not the best areas and not the best communities within Canada. Uh, so I really want to go back and make change to my, in my communities. Uh, but in, I also realize that there's, there's a lot of uh, value in international relations and the more macro aspect of it. I mean, my parents are immigrants, just like many other Canadians' families. And because of that, I'm also interested in international relations and conflict studies. So, so yeah. That's awesome. That's a really, a really thoughtful and thought out of kind of uh, approach to, you. to your education, which is great. I think that, you know, talking about um, problem solving and, and finding yeah. solutions to those problems is where, again, policy is super powerful. So maybe talk a bit about, you know, you know again, we're Toronto guys, so um, you know, we, we understand how great it is to be in Toronto and local Raptors and all that good stuff, well, Leafs. Um, but um, I was, was there when we won. I was downtown when we won. It was crazy. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah, yeah. You're, at, you're at Jurassic Park when, when the Raptors won? Yeah, 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 it was insane. That's unreal. That's unreal. I was in uh, Montreal visiting my parents, and I remember trying to convince my mom to come down with me to the parade. Um, she said no, uh, which uh, <laughs> in retrospect was a good idea. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> but, <laughs> um, but yeah, so I was going to ask like about Ottawa, you know, being in the nation's capital, like how, was, how has that experience been so far for you? And and what are some of the things you're going to look forward to kind of taking advantage of, uh, again, being in uh, the nation's capital? See, I absolutely love Ottawa because it's a whole different vibe, I find. Uh, you know, Toronto is a bustling city with a lot of, a lot of noise and, you know, just a lot of um, different peoples coming together. And Ottawa is not that it isn't like that. Ottawa is very diverse. You know, like there are like the, the French speaking people. There are a lot of immigrant populations and whatnot. But what makes Ottawa very unique is that it's really the hub of government and a lot of government related institutions. Um, any nonprofit, any like supranational organization or any anything that you can think of that relates to government is there. And which is really good for a lot of people that do want to make change in their communities because you can make like contacts. I mean, uh, I've been to so many events where I casually run into members of parliament or, you know, you can go to Queen's Park and like, I, sorry, Queen's Park uh, question period, like you can go to Parliament Hill and, you know, see MPs and you can maybe even run into the prime minister. Like these are things that can genuinely happen. I have friends that consistently go and watch question period live, you know, in house. And after they, they see members of parliament and they talk with them and, you know, just being in Ottawa is a very nice thing because uh, as I said, you're in the hub. And because of that, there are so many opportunities to really put yourself in there. I mean, um, for example, I got a, a job with the federal government the first month I started university, the first month, you wow. know, and I'm pretty sure this wouldn't have been possible if I lived in Toronto and if I lived in anywhere else. But because there are so many opportunities for young people, especially if you're a young person with a lot of initiative, uh, that's why Ottawa is the, the place. And I also like the fact that um, I find that there's a, there's a huge student population in Ottawa as well. Like, I mean, I find Ottawa to be a young city. It's either very like middle-aged people that are like, like you, know, you know, career bureaucrats or very young people like myself that are just, you know, in university. And it's just really nice because there's, there's someone for you, especially if you're someone that's really, really interested in government and politics and anything that can relate to government in any way, then Ottawa is your city. Yeah, and, and I have a question that I want to ask about in your first year, but I also want to throw out a question to um, our audience. So I wanna, I'm curious to know, you know, what are you looking forward to? What are you looking forward to either next year or 
throughout your undergraduate degree. So hit up the comments, let us know what you're looking forward to. And if there are questions you have for Yavuz, please um, ask those questions too. Um, so here's a question I have for you, uh, which is, uh, take me back to kind of year one. Let's reflect for a second. And what was maybe a highlight of your first year, maybe a prof that made an impact? I know you referenced <clears throat> one of your profs that talked a bit about what public affairs is all about. Yeah. Maybe kind of uh, share some of your, your highlights. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, a couple of highlights. I guess I'll give three different highlights in, in, for affecting me in different ways. I mean, I think my biggest highlight was uh, Carlton sent me to Guatemala uh, to, wow. help, yeah, yeah, to help with a local nonprofit. Uh, by the way, guys, another reason to come to Carlton, honestly, like there are so many scholarships and there are so many programs that you can take, like, take advantage of. I mean, I applied to something called Alternative Spring Break, and you guys should all... Um, uh, like I'm sure you guys will love that program. I, I, I ask that you do apply next year if you do come. So Alternative Sp Spring Break sent me to uh, Carlton University, uh, sorry, to Guatemala. And uh, in Guatemala, we actually, I was an English teacher for a week at a uh, Guatemalan middle school in uh, Antigua and just in the mountains. It was, it was so beautiful. And uh, I really got to help out in my communities. And also I got to learn uh, from those communities as well. Um, so that was definitely a highlight, just seeing, uh, the experiences and the values and the even like the languages of different peoples. I mean, it was just insane. Genuinely, when I came back to Canada, I was like, wow, I definitely need to spend more time abroad and get to know like more people uh, outside of just, you know, my own sphere. Uh, so that was one highlight. Uh, the second highlight was honestly, uh, my, my classes in general with my political science prof, uh, Dr. Rada Japan. Uh, you guys should definitely take her. She's honestly like the best political science prof in my opinion. Sorry for, for the other political science profs. But uh, <laughs> the, the reason for why I absolutely loved her class was, uh, so as many of you guys probably know, we're kind of in a time in our lives and just in, within civilization, there's a lot of um, polarization. And especially, you know, like it's liberal versus conservative or this and that. And um, this is not really particularly good for uh, the academic sphere where you're trying to learn and you're trying to learn new opinions, both, you know, the conservative opinion and the liberal opinion or whatnot. Um, and, you know, Professor Rada Japan, she was a professor that talked about things in both ways and she allowed us to actually question her views. I mean, uh, some, like we've heard a lot, especially young people, we hear a lot about like professors being very defensive about, you know, their views and not allowing dissenting opinions. But I mean, I've personally dissented to some of our opinions and I absolutely, we were, we got along very well. I mean, we would get along so well that after classes, we'd have like one hour discussions after class, just like talking about stuff. And I mean, that's what I really like about political science. And that's what I really liked about her specifically as a prof, because she was willing to, there were times in class this where she just half the class was just people like students talking to her, you know, and that's what was wonderful. And that's what university is about, about sharing opinions. Uh, so just her class in general was absolutely a highlight. I loved it so much. It was, I enjoyed every single moment of it. The third highlight was uh, for any of you that's interested in taking public affairs and policy management or taking a Papam 1000 class, I don't think you will take it if you're not in the major, but uh, my public affairs prof, uh, Marc-Andre Gagnon, he was, he's like, he's a very like funny guy and he's just, he has a very jolly outlook on life and he's, obsessed with pharmaceutical policy and especially this was so fun because it's fo so fun and interesting because right when COVID-19 happened and the whole pandemic started he like started going off about everything and it was just it was just so so cool just to get an inside outlook on everything related to pharmacy for like pharmaceutical policy I mean he he gave a whole lecture about just like um, hydrochloroquine and like you know the stuff Donald Trump was talking about and all that right. so um, he gave a more policy approach to that. He, he talked about it that in that way. So I think those three were highlights of my, of my year. I mean, I can name like 10 other highlights, but in the essence of time, I don't think I should get into it. No, that's, uh, that's but, awesome. Yeah. And it's cool that you're, you're talking, again, this is all from your first year, which is phenomenal. And uh, there was somebody here who mentioned that one of their things, the things they're looking for is being back on campus and having classes near the river building. So uh, casual, uh, uh, casual otaku 24, uh, I echo those sentiments, looking forward to being back on campus as well. And then there was a question for you uh, that I want you to get before we, we turn off or sign off here. Uh, and the question is uh, from Patrick, who's saying he's heading to social policy. So um, maybe what was like a, a good course to take uh, in year one to connect with that social policy area? 
Uh, my first year, honestly, first year course would be uh, political science, two thousand two and two thousand three. I forgot the names of these courses because I know like the codes of them. Uh, but yeah, PSTI two thousand two and two thousand three. Uh, that's actually one of the courses with uh, Professor Rada Japan. I don't think she's actually teaching this year because she's taking a year off. Uh, but still. Uh, basically, any course I recommend any course that's domestically involved. I I've gotten some uh, like I've talked to my friends that took more courses like political science courses about international relations and conflict, and they said that it's a little more general. Um, but courses that are specifically about Canada, uh, especially during COVID nineteen, I think it's going to be really interesting. So if you're interested in social policy, you need to take more domestically oriented courses because that's what you're going to be talking about. Awesome. We'll leave it at that. Uh, thank you so much for for checking in with us. I mean, that was super great. Um, uh, have a great summer, and uh, hopefully, we'll see you on campus uh, very soon. Yeah, thank you so much, uh, honestly, for having me. Sorry, I talked a little too much, but I, I got really oh, passionate great. about it. <laughs> I love it. I mean, this is what we want. You know, it's better to go over time and have a good time too. So, um, yeah. so I'm glad you were able to do that. Um, and so, thanks before, again. Before I leave, I if anyone needs any help with uh, like public affairs and policy management or anything related to. Uh, political science or things that I could answer, you can connect with me on LinkedIn uh, at y a v u z space t o p b a s yavuz topaz. Uh, that's my LinkedIn. You can find me, or you can just email me at yavuz topaz at cmail dot carlton dot ca. Uh, I will always reply back, and we can connect. And I'd love to be your friend. Awesome! Thank, Thank you, you so much. much. Take care. All right, so before we wrap things up, uh, again, I want to thank everyone for tuning in. I want to remind you that in one hour, you're going to come back to uh, Carlton Underscore Futures Instagram Live uh, to hear more from our student experience office. And if there were questions we couldn't get to today, um, please uh, send those questions to um, our uh, recruitment team, uh, admissions at carlton.ca, um, or you can DM us on Carlton underscore future, and we'll try our best to uh, get to those questions. So uh, again, thank you for tuning in. Uh, my name is Stanley P, and I hope you have an amazing day. Take care.